So um, let's do some new products. Let's do some new products. Do the show. All right. Hey, you guys. We got these giant rolls of blue tape. Yeah, I know. <laughs> what are we doing? 3D printing is weird. So um, if you're having. Uh, Look at these rolls. Okay, this is ridiculous. No, this is great. Look at this roll of blue tape. <laughs> Right. What do you, you guys are going to paint for all really This, this is, is painter's amazing. tape, but it's six inches wide, and I think it's like 50 yards long or 30 yards long. What's funny is, like, the people who are pros in 3D printing, they live by this. They're like, they love you need it. the blue tape. And they're like, oh, you can get the special blue tape. So we have to, we had to find it. And this is Scotch brand special blue this tape. This is the real deal. This is not some, like, cheap knockoff. This no. is uh, 3M brand uh, Scotch tape. Made, blue is made best. In boom, boom. <laughs> Blue is best. Um, blue is, is best. This is a blue painter's tape. It's really high quality. It won't it won't gum up or, or stick. But if you're if you have a three D printer and you have a build plate, you may have experienced the uh, frustration of trying to get um, the thing you printed off of the build plate because it's it sticks and it's it's hard to scrape it off. Yeah. So when you have the blue painter's tape, it's it has a little bit of a roughness to it that allows the melted plastic to yeah. stick on, glom on, and it sticks nicely, and it's nice and flat. And um, because it's six inches wide, it's like one piece. You don't have to you don't have to worry about a seam by trying to get multiple pieces to like line up perfectly. You just use this. Yeah. Um, so you take, put this on, and then it's very very easy to pry. Um, off the thing you're trying to remove, or you can of course pull the tape. You can show the you can show the image with the Jimmy knife. Yeah. So you'd print it, and you'd be like, "This thing is stuck on here forever. What am I gonna do?" And you're like, "Oh no, it's okay." Just pry it off. Very easy. So this is this is gold. You also use glue stick, but um, I, this is the kind yeah. of the most elegant, and you get a huge amount. It is a little expensive because it's you know the best quality blue painter's tape, but. It'll last you for quite a long time. Yeah. What's funny is the standard is so high for us. We even if there was like. Uh, you know, cheap ass brand. We'd still have to get the best because that's what we have to do. No, you want to. If you're doing 3D print, there's nothing worse than. I mean, like, why save two bucks and then have your three-hour print ruined? Like, yeah, think about your time. Think about your time. Okay. Blue painter's tape. Late data. There's more. There's more new products. Okay. So the next new product. Um, so when I put the images in, um, they kind of look the same. So maybe you can help me out. This one was okay. kind of the same. Yeah, yeah. Stop. So this is okay. the set. <laughs> stop. Don't. Stop! Mm. This is the seven-inch HDMI uh, backpack for a Raspberry Pi or any other HDMI device. We're showing you with the Raspberry Pi; it's more, more most popular. But basically, it's um, a seven-inch 840 display resolution, full color, with a really beautiful backlight, and it comes on um, our custom PCB. Next, next one. Okay. Wait, can you move your mouse up to? No, oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh man, <laughs> There's like two it's 8.51, it means I'm about to run out. No, no, it's about one more finish up. So it's a gigantic PCB, it's mostly empty, but um, um, over there you can see there's an HDMI connector, and then um, it's a, a, this large chip, which is an HDMI decoder, and um, below that there's um, a micro SD connector, and the micro SD is for power. So it drives about 600 milliamps of power, um, which you can get from any port, and so this is a little monitor, basically, that can, anything that uses HDMI, you plug it in, and it's a, it's a display, so I'll just show the okay. photos. So I have some so other photos that you had me version, put in. This is the version without a touch screen. Okay. Oh, so there's with and without. That's the difference. Yeah. And this one has a touch screen. So if you oh. skip, so I just show like running some programs. I understand that. This is without. And then when you have a finger and you're touching things and it's doing things, that's with. With. Okay. So this is the version with the touch screen, so you can see there's a, a hand touching it. We have a five inch version of this backpack, but the seven the seven inches is basically the same. It's a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger black light backlight, but not significantly more power. But if you want like a large, easy to panel mount display, um, this is definitely a really good thing. I have a little demo I could just show on the overhead to that's show right. this off. That's exactly to what we're going to do. Show how big next. it is. That's exactly what we're going to so, do. So um, I'll turn this off. And then this is the Raspberry Pi. And then it's in sleep mode. Um, there you go. So you can just like run stuff. That's very responsive. Yeah. Well, it's, it's just, it just shows up. At the touch display shows up as a mouse. You don't even need any special drivers. No special drivers. Um, and then no like, kernel hacking. No, it just works. It no works, kernel it hacking. It works out of the, the Pi. And because it's the HDMI output, it's accelerated. So you can run Minecraft and like. Um, video in, that, in that video that you did, we were running Minecraft. It was cool. Look at you. Guys. Well, look at, this, yeah, this is a big calculator. I can do some math. Look at me. I'm like mm. running math. So this is the most expensive calculator. Oh, oh, oh. What, can you, can what, you, can what, you clear what, up, what? Can you clear off on the calculator real quick? 
All right, Lady Ada, if someone wants to sell electronics for a living and they have, need to do 240% margins, what type of multiplication should they this, do? You should get this screen because I'm going to show you exactly how to calculate your prices. So yeah, let's that do this. You don't lose money and you make, stay in business. Make her, it's make her business right now. Live, okay. live, live, live. Do it, do it, do it, do it. All how right, much first do people off, need don't to get charge? too much of a, too big of a new building and don't have too many people. But then okay. take your uh, bill materials cost, so let's say it's $10. Yeah. And then you want to have a, your first margin, which is your wholesaler margin. You multiply by one, wait, hold on, multiply by 1.7, click. Yeah. So, so that's your first margin. That's your first margin. Your so, first so when margin. You, you, that's the margin that you sell to wholesalers who are buying 50 or 100 at a time. You make this, this is what you're selling to the people who are going to sell it to someone else. That's right, like okay. us or a okay. store. How much should they sell it for, Lady Ada? That's a good question. A okay. really good margin is another 40% margin, so you multiply by 1.7 again. And that's it, a 40% margin, remember, is off of the final price, so you multiply by 1.7. But then if you were dividing, it would be by 0.6, because right? mm -hmm. math is transitive. So the final price would basically be about $29. I usually round it up to 30 because it's usually packaging or like, you know, the yield world. or <laughs> the, the world. world. So, uh, so if you have something that costs $10, your final price ideally it's 30. So that's why it's very important to think about your bill of materials costs and um, your yield calculations and labor, labor overhead, and everything. overhead because this way you have plenty of space. So if you sell direct, you'll get two margins. And if you sell to a reseller, you'll get one margin, but hopefully they will be buying a lot more yeah. from you. Okay. And that's how to run a business successfully by Lady Ada. Okay, that's it. You can do that on a pie screen. And All right. this seven inch screen is great for it. You don't need an MBA, you just need a pie. Okay, that's next right. up. So this is this cute little knife from iFixit. Um, this helps you pry open iPhones and get its secrets. And, uh, or any gadget. I actually yeah, used it today. I was yeah. opening up, um, I, I, it's really I got good. an FTDI cable, and get I wanted to, to check if, um, yeah. here, I'll, uh, I'll change this up. So this yeah. Is um, iFixit is doing a really good job. This is a great tool, yeah. and uh, we carry a couple of tools from iFixit. And this is a slightly flexible um it reminds Jimmy me of, if you do drywall, it reminded me of one of those things. There's plenty I, and, knives. And I was always like, oh, you know what? That'd be cool for gadgets, and they did it. It's but cool. this is better, I, in my opinion, because like, I used this today, because I was like, I want to take apart this cable, and I was a prying open, um, uh, like a plastic uh, molded enclosure. So first off, it's thin, but not so thin that you're like, ow, I'm dying, and I'm sharp, and I'm killing myself. So this, this yeah. is not, um, don't use a, a razor or, or a box cutter. Seriously, people, don't do that. It's a really bad idea. Um, you, will, you will cut yourself, and you'll bleed to death. And uh, it's really goth, but not a good way to start no. your day. Um, and then um, this has like a nice, it has this like curve here, which is really good for getting in at the beginning. And then you curve in and then you pop it with the full part of the blade. Okay. So the way this design is really, really smart. Um, I really like this blade. And I carried it, and uh, they already sold out. And actually, by the way, like half of Adafruit grabbed one because they're like, I'm always taking about parts yeah, and boxes. So everyone grabbed one, and then we sold like a bunch of them. So we'll yeah. get more. Okay. And then last up, um, the star beside you tonight is a poster that we're really proud of, designed by Bruce Yen. Make robot friend, not robot enemy. This is the one I was talking about before. Um, hey, hackerspaces, makerspaces, schools, universities, anyone out there that um, truly believes that one day we will be cohabitating this planet with robots. Um, if you keep track, there is one planet already populated by robots that we know of. It's Mars. True. So by the way, folks, um, uh, think about the care and the code that we put in the robots, um, one day um, they're going to meet us. Not robot yet. Yeah, don't, don't make robot slave or robot enemy. Make yeah. a robot friend. We, we know how this story turns out. So yeah. we made this poster, and uh, this poster is for peace. Um, to use this together. Um, attempt no landing on Europa uh, is the other thing I had to say. Okay.